beginning again. After a long deliberation uh, between Rebecca and I, we decided that we are going to do the talk in English. Yeah, because my Portuguese is a little wrong. Okay. Uh, so, um, as I mentioned upstairs, uh, unfortunately, that would be too constraining to be in the gallery at this point. Uh, so we are here. What we decided to do, being aware, Rebecca, that this is the first time that your work is being presented in Portugal, that we, uh, we would pick a few works that are in the exhibition so that Rebecca can actually give you um, the keys to enter the works. To the door. There is a door actually in the exhibition. There is a Brazilian door uh, that I think you can find in the street of Porto as well. Um, so we have a, 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 we made this selection, and Rebecca will go through the, uh, these images, and hopefully and certainly, it will give you uh, the major direction of the work, both in terms of the material you use, the way you define the materiality of your work, uh, from the panels, I think it would be important to talk about the golden section, but I do not want to put words in your mouth, um, and then uh, to the, uh, the content of the painting. We will end, I mean, it's, I didn't mention that upstairs, but we're also very privileged to have a painting in the exhibition that we are kind of premiering, because it, beside, I think, a few been shown in New York, but uh, just for five days, just for five days uh, a painting that you have worked on for the entire confinement. Yeah. Um, so we are going to show you how you make the sausage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, do you have your... This one, okay, go, should I press go? Press go, the, sh the show must go on. We're starting, I'm just starting with this image, which is, should I hold that? You have one. You have oh. one. Oh, sorry. Hello. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm just starting with this image, which is at the entrance of the exhibition, because it is, I made it right before I began this chapter kind of method I use. Um, and it's very important to me because it, 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 it it shows a sculpture, sculpture by uh, a Polish uh, artist called Katarzyna Kobro, and she built this piece in 1928. Um, and during the 90s and 80s, I was trying, struggling to figure out how to possibly paint again, because it's, you know, with all, all, all the way the world was changing, and photography, and the digital, and it was, you didn't really want to be a painter. You wanted to be a mixed media artist or, you know, it, it was, seemed kind of reactionary to be painting. And, uh, but I, I was really kind of stubborn about it. I like, I, I like to paint, that's all I can do. So I had to figure out how to stick with it. And um, I also like to research and write. And I kept making very different kinds of paintings and feeling that I couldn't, hang all those kinds of different kinds of paintings in one room. Because you know how when you go to a painting show, often it seems like just variations of one painting? I kind of couldn't find a way to do that, because I didn't know what was that one painting I want to make. <laughs> and so uh, I was invited. I, I found ways to make paintings site-specific for a while and via photography and silkscreen. Um, but then I was invited to Poland to be in a show, and I couldn't make a site-specific work because I didn't know where the paintings would go. So I started researching uh, Lotz Poland, or Łódź Poland, which was where my grandparents had come from. Um, and I had never met them because they were both killed in a very bad car accident in, uh, after visiting the World's Fair in 1940. Um, and my father was a painter, and I got a lot of my prejudices about painting from him. <laughs> but I I always been curious about that side of the family. So I was researching Wuj and I came across Katarzyna Kobro and I was just really loved this her work very much. 
And so I, I started researching it, and I built, re built a model of this, this sculpture because what I liked about it was you couldn't locate where in time it was from at all. It could have been made last week, and also it could have been any size. It was architectural, it was black and white, and it also showed the failure of the photograph, which is my favorite thing about uh, sculpture, because you can't really show a sculpture in a photograph. And I think, I think, I think I've always been battling the photograph in some level. So um, anyway, I, I made a lot of a lot of paintings before I started the chapter system, based on her geometry, which she wrote about and. The first, all the paintings in the hallway, those those small paintings, are based on this sculpture geometrically. Um, yeah. Two questions, because we're doing the sausage. Uh -huh. uh, tell us about the chapters. Okay, How did so you come up yeah, with the chapters. I think it, in uh, uh, 2001, I was invited to do a show at the Queens Museum in Brooklyn, which was the site of, of the World's Fair and where this, this event had happened. And at that time I decided, because I'd been doing a lot of research in subject matter and, there was, and, and I felt that, that, that artists are often a kind of victim of the schedule of the art world where you do a show and then it disappears, poof, gone. And I wanted, I thought, I, I, I want all of it to remain somehow present, the past work to remain connected to the most recent work. And I, I'd always liked this, this artist, um, Hilma Af Klint, who was a Swedish um, mystic artist that I ended up actually showing with at the Guggenheim last year, two years ago. And her, I loved, she had the idea, she said, all my work is one. And that really struck me. Wow, that's a, how is all your work one? And how could it, how could it all remain relevant to, you know, always present in a sense? So uh, I decided to embark on this just way to think and structure my thought by calling it a book and each exhibition a chapter. And that it would force me and the viewer uh, to not leave the past behind, I guess, in a sense. Um, and I also like very much the serial quality or just serial things, yeah. Well, I mean, I think I can say that without breaking any secret. You grew up between a painter and a poet. Yeah. Between mm -hmm. painting and books. Yes. And if you look at the, the display, <clears throat> the, the way the exhibition is organized here, as many of, of your exhibition, exhibition are books, but also the shape, the form of the book exists within the yeah. exhibition. Yeah, because the first way I thought of, of kind of, because if there's one thing that we're over, overwhelmed with now, it's the photograph and the digital, the digital photography, and it's hard really to look at anything almost, because we're so bombarded by it. And painting especially seemed kind of just lost in the face of, of that, especially because abstraction had given up perspective, which is the one thing that really, uh, I mean, photography obviously depends on Renaissance perspective. So I, I actually worked for almost a decade on perspective and what it was and how to make it abstract and flatten it. And I ended up pushing, pushing photographs back into one point perspective via basically Photoshop. I couldn't have done it really before that. Uh, so in a funny way, my, my chapters begin with the computer and also being able to just look up Cobro on the internet and digitally manipulate photographs. So uh, yeah, and then yeah, it's just. One, one, more, one more recipe question. Mm. Um, all your paintings, are on wooden planks yeah. that are, uh, have an edge. I know you, I mean, at some point, I think you tell the story of the anxiety of storage, which yes. we all suffer from. Yes. Um, why the wooden planks? Is that related to this idea of the, the painting right. as a. Well, uh, there was two things because I had two art, artist parents a stepfather who was a sculptor, and my father was a painter. Stepfather dies, lots of unsold work and storage. 
My father was dying at the time when I, of cancer, and he had a huge st studio also full of paintings. And so, and I wasn't doing very well in my career, like commercially, shall we say. <laughs> and so paintings were accumulating, and I felt this is a kind of a nightmare, this accumulation of paintings. So how can I make it okay to, to, to accumulate one's own paintings? And then it occurred to me, well, it's okay to accumulate books on shelves, so maybe if I organize it like books on shelves where you can stack them on shelves, it will be somehow address that anxiety and make it okay, so. They don't accumulate much the, more anymore. But they, then they actually, when I did, they, no, and now I don't have any, any of them, hardly, so. Okay. Should we move to the next one? Oh, yeah. Oops. It's the scarf. Where's the thing? Here. Uh, just, it's just a, a quick image of um, showing kind of the geometry of, of, of the golden section, which I was at first a little reluctant to use because it's kind of very utopic, old-fashioned way to think about things. But I swear it's the best thing I ever did in my life to, to, to try to stick to that because it's so generative, that geometry. And what it importantly enabled me to do, I don't know if you ever have tried to draw a golden section or, all you do is you take one dimension and multiply it by 1.618. So I starts with, start with the Cobro dimension and it enables me to place together very different kinds of paintings and have there be a kind of internal geometry that I think people see and feel. So this kind of shows how you can nest paintings and, uh, and, and relate them, but relate very different kinds of images. So if yeah. If you look at the exhibition, you will see these shapes, of course, the format of the works, but this circular shape, yeah. which appears on the diagram here, that somehow is a connecting tissue. Yes. Between the different, uh, yeah. the different painting, and it's all that to say that between what you describe about the, the the wooden plank, the golden section that you have invented in order to make you have invented constraints, mm -hmm. systems mm -hmm. in order to produce. Yes, painting. I, it's definitely true. The, the these kind of constraints really are uh, expanding. Ironically, you know, they 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 enable you to. Get, get places that n you couldn't think up, you know, in your own imagination. But, but, but these kind of, I wouldn't say rules, but, but a kind of underlying or overarching structure can be very, very freeing, you know, in a, ironically. Yeah. Some people used apples. Apples? Okay. <laughs> Cézanne. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but he didn't have an apple in every painting. No. <laughs> Not every painting. No. <laughs> or more randy. You do yeah. Like, like systems. Yeah. But, yeah. but I call it a method and not a system okay. for the simple reason that a system is for itself and a method is a way to get into something that's more less defined. Um, and I actually think it would be a good pedagogical method and someday maybe I'll, I'll use it as a way to teach. You know, I, I think it would work as a pedagogical method. We, we, can, we can use We you. can discuss that later. Yeah. You. <laughs> you know, teach you painting, yeah. Should we go to the, the yeah, now um, that we start to have the, all the ingredients? Okay, so um, this image was, I, 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 I anchored this show as with a backbone between this image and, and the big earth image because I feel that it's, it, it, it always, every time I do an exhibition, it, the architecture is wildly different and it makes very, very intense demands on a painting and a de demand on the installation. Um, so bringing chapter 35 from the very kind of 19th century building in, in Woods to Seralva's its exact opposite was challenging. So I had to kind of 
think about what is sort of the backbone to images that are going to hinge all these kind of disparate approaches and diff different paintings the, the, together. The other painting that Rebecca is talking about, the big earth, the, the big it one, was the, the first earth. image you had on the, on the, the screensaver, yeah. which is a v, the big orb, uh, which is in the middle of the, of, yeah. the, of the exhibition. Maybe we should talk a little bit, because I, I, I was able to, to bring this chapter that I had originally made for uh, Brazil at Inochim, which is a sculpture park in Brazil, and um, it, they, I had been invited to, to make a chapter, and I designed a pavilion, but they haven't made the pavilion yet because the man was arrested. I mean, it went it was all kinds of drama. But then he, they said house arrest. People. I mean, and his house is the most luxurious and huge garden. I mean, who wouldn't want to have be under house arrest there? So the, the, the Brazilian confinement. Yeah, it was Brazilian confinement. But any case, I hope someday they build it, but, but it hasn't been built yet, and it's actually worked out for me because I've been able to borrow these paintings, and they were very important to me, these paintings. So. And the shape of the gallery is this different wall that yes. you have in the second part of the exhibition, open, opening up like that, is the reconstitution or right. inspired by of the pavilion. Of what the walls would be in yep. the pavilion, yeah. Yeah, and uh, I just... That was such a challenging situation to try to make work about Brazil because I felt very unjust. Like, I mean, I felt in a, it, not equipped to 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 do it in the beginning. But then, when I had that shape for the gesso, that that nautilus shape, suddenly things started swirling and moving and little because you can turn the paintings around and make different kinds of combinations. And uh, they, it was very fun, actually. It was just fun yeah. to make those, oh, to just make the to work with them and make them and, yeah. This painting, the, the one on the screen, mm. can, can you tell us a little bit, uh, because that will inform also about your methodology. But there is a... Okay, well, chapter 35 was kind of, I felt like it was the end of 20, 20 years of the chapters. Mm -hmm. And as the chapters progress, it gets more and more... I feel the weight of trying to see what they're doing, these chapters, and how, what, what are they saying. And uh, so when I, I had to look through all the chapters and decide what images, because I silkscreen, I have all the silkscreens, and I can reprint if I want an image. But this um, was an image I had used for a show uh, in 20, in, chapter 21, which is like 10 years ago, it, very different. But I really loved it because it's the geometry and it's the body and it's the breast and, and like a pendulum and it, it, I just wanted to do it. So I started hand painting it, not silk screening, uh, and started with this pink curve of the gesso and then put that circle on and then turned it on a diamond. and. And you, in yeah. the exhibition, you also have a, another painting, very different in terms of uh, style or uh, making, about Amazons. Yes. And here you <coughs> have a, a breast. That's right. There's that, that story of Amazons where they Cutting. cut off one breast, yeah. Just I'm bringing that up because if you look at the iconology uh, between the painting, mm -hmm. without being didactic, yeah. the subject matter that you select, the space between each of them in painting, are also telling a story yes. of your, I would say, uh, mm -hmm. commitments yeah. and a subject matter that you want the painting to share. Yes. So with yeah. the Amazon, proto-feminism, uh, an history that exists, I would say, in between the line, yes. or at times centered in mm -hmm. the paintings. Yeah. I mean. It's often said that I have personal things, or it's about my personal life, but I don't think of it that way so much. I mean, it does have personal things, but what's important uh, in those personal images is how it relates to, I guess, art history, and how, or a more common thing than just, I know that person or whatever, so, yeah. Talking about art history. I think the, the next okay, one. Okay, the next one is a perfect 
example. Yeah, this this image is um, uh, uh, the Angelus Novus. Um, some of you might know it by Paul Clay, and uh, it's a. I had to. I was invited to do a show in Tel Aviv, and I. At, whenever I'm invited to do a show, at a, anywhere, I go and research it and look around and like any tourist, really, you know, what's, and just what, what, and Clay was not somebody I really was that interested in at all, but I, we had the opportunity to, to see this it, very important work for, for Israel to own and be in that museum. They said, this is our most precious artwork, they said to me, because it was Walter Benjamin's and Gershom Scholl, blah, 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 blah. So we went and looked at it, Mark Godfrey and I, and I noticed that it was glued onto an old engraving. And I said, oh, what's the engraving under it? And no one had ever even noticed that it was glued onto an old engraving before. Uh, and so that started about a year-long search for what was under the Angelus Novus. And it was quite dramatic. They sent it to Rome. They had all the scientists do it. And you know, they, they, they had done, as I said before, they, the Dead Sea Scrolls, so I figured they'd, they'd figure it out. But they didn't figure it out, and I finally figured it out after I did the show. And it turned out to be Martin Luther. Which or did you figure, I think there was a, uh, Miguel mentioned me, oh, you figured it out, or did you figure it out? Uh, well, I, I, I happen to really love print, old prints and engraving, and I really can look at them forever and ever, and I have a small collection of them. And, and so it's not a boring for me to look through collections of old engravings. And I knew the technique and I knew the dimensions, so I just go through, Italy has incredible websites with old engravings. And this one in particular, it had about 80 pages with about 100 prints on every page. And I was just going through, because I wanted to find it badly. <laughs> I was really curious about it. And then by accident, I just, I mean, literally it was by accident that I, luck, finally. I mean, accident and hard work, but, but it was also not the greatest discovery for, for Israel because, I mean, uh, Luther is, was a pretty severe anti-Semite. Um, and we don't know if, if Benjamin knew mm -hmm. about it, but... Benjamin definitely focused on the Reformation a lot, and so anyway, it was a it was a very important uh, discovery, and it also points to my my focus of on the edges of pictures, because the one thing I was a very very always sensitive to is this kind of ego of a painting has a big ego, right? But the audience doesn't seem to have to approach painting the way they used to approach it, you know, like in this kind of m m worshiping way, and that the audience, to me, seemed to be moving by. Five, sec five seconds per work. Yeah, five, on an average, exactly. In a museum. Yeah. So I began to think of ways to make paintings that you can walk by, and what does a painting do when it's in the periphery of your vision, and things like that. So maybe I was just, folk also I didn't like the image. It's an ugly Which one? image, the, the, the Angelus. Yeah. You, I was just like, oh, Clumsy. look, it's just sort of ugly. So mm -hmm. I look to the side. But it's also, I mean, if you look at the exhibition, I, I wanted us to show this image because there is a lot of images of painting in the show, in the mm. exhibition, where you uh, um, uh, explore or work on something which is under. So yes. Uh, that there is this idea of covering, recovering, discovering, but uh, and uncovering, uh, starting yeah. from an unseen images that you almost cancel out mm -hmm. with your own painting. There is, you will see in the exhibition, that we have an X-ray of the Malevich paint of the, yeah. uh, the Malevich mm -hmm. painting, which. Oh, oh! The, I'll show. I'll just show you the image underneath of that. That see, that's Martin Luther under it. Um, yeah, there. are we next? Oh, and that's, and this is what I saw. That's all I had to go on, really, when I first discovered it. Um, 
Okay, should we do it? Yep. Oh, well, that's not Malevich then. No, we, I don't, well, I'm not sure we have Malevich. I'll just quickly just show you. Uh, this is a close-up of a, a Straminsky uh, painting at the Museum Stuki. And under many of the white, the white big paintings in the main room, I silk screened the, this Im image first as a way to start painting. So for example, the cross, underneath the cross is that. And I just started painting on it a lot and just painted and painted and went through many, many kind of crazy stages like that. And, uh, uh, and I, I arrived at what, what it is now. But it's, it's sort of interesting that, yeah, I, I, almost covering up the painting. Yeah. And in the middle, of these paintings, the cross is actually made by the section on the edge. Yes, of often your you'll painting. see those kind of those lines, and those are trompe l'oeil depictions of the edge of the panel. And the reason I like a beveled edge and not canvas is because a canvas can be made any size. You don't know. I mean, it could be, and then stretched later. You know, so you could do it on the wall or wherever. But with wood, you start with what it is. And I, that was important to me. There would be no ambiguity about where the edge was, mm -hmm. you know, of the painting. So, yeah. Okay, I think well, this is the piece this de resistance. Is but is that the film? No, that's the painting. Okay, so this is the painting that, that uh, I had n not finished the last painting for this chapter. So when I got back to my studio after Poland, um, and after visiting here to make a site visit, I had this very big painting left to do, and I just really went into this painting. It's very unlike any painting I ever made before. I had have I was had written an essay on Jasper Johns for his retrospective that's coming up, and I ended up focusing on his American flag painting, and I was a little bit critical. Well, to be honest, I was a little critical of John's. Has he read the essay? <laughs> I don't know if he's read it yet. Um, I had to rewrite it because it was too critical at first, but I did rewrite it. It was good I rewrote it. And then I thought, well, if I'm going to criticize, I better do my own flag. I can't just, you know. Like if you're going to talk the talk, you have to walk the walk. <laughs> so, <laughs> but I didn't know where it was going, and it just... Uh, and the, the interesting thing about painting it to me was that I use, so in, in each section of that is a, the geometry that I use. So there's the small square, the big square, there's the eight sizes. And I would just focus on those areas without worrying what the whole was gonna turn into, which is kind of different than how you ordinarily would pose a painting. And, uh, and, and, and then I, I realized very, very far into it, after I painted a long time, that it kind of was a giant eye, you know, and that the black circle is a pupil. But I didn't set out to do that, so it was but, satisfying. But there is also, then we will, you, you, you provided us with a, a small animation, an, quote unquote oh, yeah. animation, not quite yet, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> about the painting, but. It's a six-month process. It's a very complex painting. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, an, uh, a proper art historian uh, would spend years uh, uh, deciphering every single uh, uh, um, uh, aspect of iconology in this painting. Well, I became aware, actually, uh, that reminds me. One thing that really bothered me about this investigation of clay and the and the, and the kind of, all paintings that are precious or artworks are now x-rayed. Mm -hmm. And I felt like it was almost like a rape. Like, I, he didn't want me to know what was behind it. Otherwise, he would have made it that way. And so in a way, it was, it, I, I felt, I felt a little odd about doing that. Mm -hmm. I mean, it wasn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want somebody, you know, x-raying my paintings. Maybe we don't have I to I think show somebody, the, the, someone doesn't want uh, this painting to... You'll the museum is not burning. <laughs> was that not, not every week. Uh, <laughs> I 
<laughs> well, we only have to show it because we're going to put it on the website, too. Well, I think we should show it because there are so many elements. I mean, if you look at the, this painting, you have, for instance, the American star from the American yeah. flag. You have the flag. <coughs> you have Muybridge. You had, at some point, Donald Trump and Vladimir Putin. Yeah. So all, all of Everything. that has been covered. Yeah. Yeah. Should we look at the movie, then? What, did, we, did we lose the electricity? Uh, oh, yeah, we, sorry, I didn't notice. Oh, <laughs> I that's was what very I'm <laughs> saying, that's what I'm saying, yeah. Oh, okay. Because there was another, um, there's another painting that I use in x-ray in the show, which we didn't show, which is the Malevich white on white, which was also an x-ray. That's unfortunate. I tell you, I, I break electronics. Is that coming back, or uh, we're going to make it? I'm sorry, I, I thought you had the image. I kept talking. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> well, we could do it. In <laughs> yeah. So it does feel, though, it feels sort of, is it, is it OK to x-ray art? I don't know. Well I, I mean, well, I think it's OK, because I don't think there is any taboo. But it is kind of like stripping it, you know? Yeah, but I mean, you come after a generation of artists who've been appropriating, deappropriating, reappropriating, yeah. reclaiming. So this gesture, I mean, there is a, a part of your work which is also iconoclast. Like what? Between iconoclasm mm -hmm. and iconophily. Mm -hmm. You love and you hate. Yeah. Uh, and so I think, yeah. it's, I think it's okay. I think it's okay. We do it to the body. There is no reason we cannot do it to a painting. Oh, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're back. Okay, so we, yeah. Yeah. I, it's just sort of, you know, I took pictures of the painting every day while I was working on it. And, and this is a, a version of it. But there was also a whole debate, like, if Clay did put the Angelus over Luther, was it a defacement or not? That was interesting, too. Is that the load? We have a format issue. Thank you. I mean, it's very rough. Yeah, it's playing. No, it's playing. That's it. But I mean, I'll do a better version of it where it goes well, to the we, end. We, we, no, well, it was a decision, not 
to show the entire film. We want you to leave wanting more <laughs> uh, <laughs> and coming back to see the show and maybe we'll put the entire yeah. uh, uh, process on, uh, on our website. I mean, I wanted also to finish with this painting, Rebecca, because as I mentioned earlier, when four years ago, yeah. you opened the show <laughs> exactly at the same yeah. date. At the, and the show was called The Morning. I can tell yeah. the story. Yes. Um, and uh, that the show was worked on during the entire uh, 2016 uh, presidential campaign. Mm -hmm. And there's a very large painting that is not here, but called The Morning. And I think if I remember your words uh, uh, accurately, one of your hope was that the morning after the United States would have uh, the first woman president. Mm -hmm. And this morning never came. Uh, we didn't plan it this way, just absolute serendipity that we are four years after, on October 15, almost having the same conversation. And for me, looking at the painting you did uh, during the confinement and thinking of this conversation we're having, just reinforced the way your painting in a, in a very subtle uh, uh, way are also capturing the way you look at our time, the, um, the aesthetic conversation, the ethical conversation and the political conversation. And this, I don't know if the symmetry comes from the golden section, mm -hmm. but it's a little bit spooky, this absolute symmetry. Yeah. Yeah. This is... We don't talk about that. Yeah. So, um, uh, thank you so much for sh uh, sharing your, um, your process with us for the exhibition. Uh, please come back and see the exhibition. There is a lot to see, a lot to look at. Really, it's an exercise in looking your work and, uh, and precision. Um, if you have any question, we can take a few questions for a few minutes. Or, a whole of wandering around and or we can go upstairs and have a drink. Okay, we go upstairs and have a drink. <laughs> Thank you.